All right, class, so this video is going to explain sort of just another problem that I think has got a lot of good aspects to it and I think will again help us with our understanding of this transfer of energy that we've been talking about um, the last few days. So here's the question at constant volume, the heat of combustion of a particular compound is minus 3432.0 kilojoules per mole. So this is really sort of like a delta H, right? This is really sort of like an enthalpy for a reaction because it's per mole. So essentially what this is saying is if I burn one mole of this compound, I'm gonna get this many kilojoules of energy you know, out, evolved. Then it says when 1.48 grams of this compound and then it gives us our molecular mass. Um, so this you know, information can be used to figure out the moles of that compound, which is what I've done right down here. So 1.481 divided by 127 gives us our number of moles of the compound that we're actually burning. Uh, we're gonna burn it in a bomb calorimeter. Uh, so let's talk about bomb calorimeters really quickly. So this is my picture of a bomb calorimeter. I've got a reaction chamber. I've got my compound inside that reaction chamber. I've got a thermometer to measure the temperature change. And I've got water sort of surrounding that. And we're gonna call this the contents of the calorimeter. So this whole thing is gonna have some heat capacity. So if I wanna increase the temperature of the whole thing, there's gonna be some heat capacity associated with that. And that's actually what we're gonna be solving for in this problem. So going back to our question, the temperature of the calorimeter raises or rose by 8.921 degrees Celsius. What is the heat capacity of the calorimeter? So the heat capacity of the calorimeter, and we're asked to find that in kilojoules per degree Celsius. That's what I'm talking about when I say, for this entire system, how much energy does it take to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius? That's really what this question is asking. And that's really what a heat capacity tells us. It's the amount of energy required to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius, which is really the same as one degree Kelvin because of you know the delta T. So the first thing that I've done is I said, well, using this heat of combustion information, sort of delta H type information, what's the Q value for this reaction? How much energy is actually evolved when I do this reaction with 0 0.0116 moles? So point, again, that 0 0.0116 moles, that comes from how much you know I actually burned in my bomb calorimeter. So this is my you know, point or 1.481 grams. I'm gonna burn it in the reaction chamber. It's gonna evolve some heat. That amount of heat is here, minus 39.98 kilojoules of energy. So this, right, is really the Q value for the actual reaction of 1.481 grams of my compound. Um, and so that Q value for the reaction will equal the Q cal, the minus Q cal, right? So Q reaction will have the opposite sign as the amount of energy that the um, calorimeter absorbs. Another way to say this, if this is sort of confusing you, is we could say this is the energy released, therefore the calorimeter must have absorbed positive 39.98 kilojoules of energy, right? So what we're saying here is really, you know, mathematically is really these words here. The calorimeter therefore must have absorbed the same amount of energy but opposite in sign. This indicates it's releasing, this indicates it's absorbing. So if we go back to our picture one more time, and I think these pictures are really helpful, right? So in our reaction chamber, we're gonna be releasing energy. So energy is gonna be going you know, out from the system to the surroundings. So the surroundings are gonna be absorbing that energy. So from the point of view of the water, from the point of view of the calorimeter, I'm gonna be gaining energy, right? Positive energy. From the point of view of the reaction, I'm gonna be losing that energy to my surroundings. All right. So now the last step in solving this problem to find the heat capacity, sort of what we're looking for. The equation that we're gonna use is Q equals C delta T. Now, I think there's some confusion about why I'm gonna be using this equation as opposed to some other equation. And really, it just boils down to the units. Kilojoules per degree Celsius, that's gonna be my units for C. Q is always gonna have units of joules or kilojoules. 
um, just an energy unit, right? Kilojoules and joules, pretty much interchangeable. Um, so my C value in terms of kilojoules per degree Celsius means I'm only gonna have to multiply by delta T. If I was looking for a heat capacity in terms of kilojoules uh, over degree Celsius times grams or times moles, then I would have to incorporate my other type of, of Q equations for heat capacity. So really just pay attention to your units and you should be totally okay. 39.98 equals C and my delta T was given as 8.921. So just plugging my numbers in, my Q value from the point of view of the calorimeter, 39.98, it's absorbing that energy. C value, my temperature change, how much the temperature increased for this system. Calculate that for C. C equals 4.48 kilojoules per degree Celsius. That is my final answer.